let's talk about solving one-step equations with rational numbers. As you guys remember, rational numbers are any numbers that can be uh, represented as a fraction. So basically we're talking fractions, mixed numbers, decimals, okay? So let's just review the steps real quick for solving rash, uh, the equation of rational numbers, basically for solving any one-step equation. You all know by now that the first step to solve any equation is to write it down. Okay, so write the equation down. The second step to solving equations is to ask yourself a question. We need to ask ourselves, is the variable isolated? Is it on one side of the equation all by itself? If you answered yes to that question, just do the math on the other side of the equation. Follow your order of operations and work step by step till you have it simplified as far as it'll go. If you answer no, to is the variable isolated, we need to show the inverse operation on both sides of the equation. We've talked many times about why it's important to show it on both sides of the equation. It's to keep it balanced, just like a teeter-totter. We have to keep that thing balanced. If we don't uh, do the same thing on both sides, it's no longer an equation. It becomes an inequality if we do that. And the third step today is going to be to solve. And today, remember your fraction and decimal operation rules, okay? You know, remember what to do with the decimal when you're adding and subtracting, how you place it when you're multiplying or dividing. Remember with your fractions, when you're adding and subtracting, you need uh, common denominators. Remember your rules for multiplying fractions and for dividing fractions, okay? So let's just jump right in and take a look at a few examples. Let's start out with decimals, okay? On the first one, we're just gonna ease into it. It says x plus 2.5 is equal to 8.3. Well, is the variable isolated? No. They are adding 2.5 or 2 and 5 tenths to x. So we need to undo that. So our inverse operation will be to subtract 2 and 5 tenths from both sides of the equation. On the side with the variable, the 2.5 and the minus 2.5 will cancel out. And we're left with, the, to doing the math, 8.3 minus 2.5. When we do that, we come up with a solution of x is equal to 5 and 8 tenths. All right, on the next one, it's a subtraction equation. But look what they're subtracting. They're subtracting a negative one and three tenths. So our inverse operation here is going to be to add, but what are we gonna be adding? That's right, we're going to be adding a negative one and three tenths to both sides of our equation. On the side with the var variable, if we subtract something and add it right back, nothing happened, we're still at D. On the other side, we're gonna do five and four tenths plus a negative one and three tenths. So our solution will be D is equal to four and one tenth. Let's take a look at uh, a multiplication equation involving decimals. On this one, is the, variable on, the one on the left, is the variable isolated? No, they're multiplying it by a negative two and six tenths. Well, to undo multiplication, we need to divide. So we're gonna to need to divide both sides by negative two and six tenths. When we do so, we're gonna isolate C. And on the other side, we know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So our solution is gonna be C is equal to two. On the right hand side, we have b divided by zero and three tenths is equal to negative six. The variable is not isolated, they're dividing it by zero and three tenths. So we need to undo that by multiplying by zero uh, and three tenths. On the side with the variable, they're going to cancel out, it leaves us with the math on the other side of negative six times zero and three tenths. Well, a negative times a positive is a negative. So our solution is gonna be B 
is equal to negative 1 and 8 tenths. Okay, let's look at some that have fractions in them. So on the first one, we have x plus a negative 2 fifths is equal to 3. The variable's not isolated, they're adding a negative 2 fifths. To undo that, we'll need to subtract a negative 2 fifths from both sides. So when we do this on the side with the variable, we're do the whole reason we're doing the inverse operation is to isolate that variable. And so it cancels out on the left hand side, leaving it with just x. And on the right hand side, we have to do a positive 3 minus a negative 2 fifths. Well, when we subtract, we're going to have to use integer rules. We're going to do keep change change. And we're going to end up with x is equal to 3 and 2 fifths. On the right hand side of the screen, we've got d minus 1 and 1 half is equal to negative 5 fourths. Well, they're subtracting 1 and 1 half from d, so we need to do the inverse of that, which would be to add 1 and 1 half to both sides. So when we add 1 and 1 half to both sides, on the side with the variable, it's going to cancel each other out, leaving us with just d, so we have d isolated. On the far side, we have a negative 5 fourths plus a positive 1 and 1 half. If we follow our integer rules, we should end up with d is equal to 1 fourth. Our last example for today is a multiplication example with involving fractions. It says negative 3 fourths c is equal to 2. Well, c is not isolated. They are multiplying by negative 3 fourths. So we need to divide by a negative 3 fourths. We know that our division rules for dividing says that we keep, change, flip. We basically multiply by the reciprocal. So we need to multiply both sides by a negative 4 thirds. When we do so on the side with the variable, well negative 4 thirds times negative 3 fourths uh, is going to equal 1, and 1 times c is just plain old c, so we have c isolated. On the left hand side, we're going to do 2 times negative 4 thirds. Well, we know that a positive times a negative is going to give us a negative solution, so on this one, our solution would be c is equal to negative 2 and 2 thirds. I hope this helps you a little bit, and if you have any problems, be sure to reach out to us.